growing up, uh, my first encounter that I ever had, I was 10 years old. My brother mm -hmm. Jack and I had went hunting. And um, my brother first saw it first. It was in a field about 100 yards away, and the grass was pretty tall. Yeah. And um, I couldn't see it because the grass was just too high. So yeah. he had to pick me up. And when he picked me up and I peered out over the grass, I could see it walking across the grass. And it was in the same area where I took the pictures uh, in 97. Oh, wow. So I decided that I would construct a metal tower where I could get up over the grass and scan the area, which was only a few miles away from where I had seen it as a kid. And so every morning before sunup, I would go get in the tower and every evening I would come down. And this went on for six months. And it was July, and we had had quite a bit of rain. It was getting evening, I was getting ready to head in, and I heard something splashing. It sounded like a man walking towards me in the water. I had seen so many animals. I had seen everything by that time, panthers, bears, but this was different. It sounded different, I knew, and when I looked up, um, maybe 150 yards away in the same exact area where I saw it when I was 10 years old. It just appeared in front of me and it moved across very slowly that I had the wind in my favor which I always tried to do and as it passed in front of me I took 27 photographs and when I got home that evening this was back in the days where you had to get your pictures developed so mm -hmm. It was going to be another day before I could see if I'd actually got it on film. And I started doubting myself, like, you know, maybe it just got like cabin fever or stir crazy. And maybe you just imagine the whole thing. So all these thoughts are going through my head. And the, the reality didn't hit me until the, I got the pictures back. And I'll be damned, right there it was. Um, a skunk ape walking across the prairie. At one point it had knelt down and was eating some grass or resting and then it got back up and moved again. Going f for any further with my research, I have went so far with it now as to where if, if I wanted to present it to the state and say we're going to need to protect these things, uh, I would have to take the final step and then all of the sudden public access to the Everglades the, is going to be dramatically impacted. And The biologists working here in this region of Florida know that I'm doing research. Um, some of them just disregard it as nonsense, but the ones who truly want to believe that there's things that we don't know about on this planet, the open-minded ones, even they said, Dave, we believe in what you're doing. We know you're, you're not lying. We, you know, you've just done this for too long, but Dave, it's just a group of chimpanzees that's somehow adapted to the glades and is living out there. That's all it could be. There's no skunk apes. What I'm seeing is six and a half feet tall. It's climbing trees, walks like a man. It's not a chimpanzee.